Hello everyone and welcome to your 50th C programming tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be diving into the realms of dynamic memory allocation in C. Now if you've reached this point of the series you're not really in the beginner zone anymore you're kind of reaching the intermediate zone so congrats for you um, but just a note that you know, if you're if you're just kind of in it to quote unquote learn C, then uh, you've probably learned the syntax, most of it anyway, to understand you know just a gist of a programming language. This is getting into the heart of really using C. So if you are actually going to read C or use C in your life, then uh, this is why you should continue the series. And uh, dynamic memory allocation is something you will see a lot of uh, because it's pretty much necessary. So this is a very very important tutorial. And I'm glad you're here. What we're going to talk about in this tutorial is malloc and free. We're going to talk about dynamically creating structs on the heap. And we're going to talk about what the stack versus the heap is, what the differences are between those two things, and all the pitfalls that come with uh, dynamic memory allocation. So yes, let's let's just dive into it because there's a lot, a lot to talk about. So we're going to start off by creating a new struct called person. And uh, the person is going to have a conscious care star called name and int age. All right. Now, um, that is all we need to do for that. And if we wanted to create this person, um, the way we did this in lesson 38 or 39, whenever I talked about structs, um, we basically just did this. So we'd say struct person p, and then we could say p.name or p.age gets 20, for example. And this was cool. This was very easy to do. It's very simple to understand. Um, yeah, that, 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 was, that was the structs tutorial that we talked about before. Now, the only issue with this is when we want to actually save a lot of these things. So for example, let's say we were making a context book kind of application. And you know, maybe you wouldn't do this in C, but uh, it's a good enough point. So if we were making a context book, and we wanted to contain a lot of person objects that have contact information, then we could do this by creating a bunch of person objects and then we could put them in a context book. And maybe we would have 10 people, maybe we would have 3000 people, I don't know. It's up to the user, of course. And the issue with this though is that we can't simply just create tons of um, people and then just keep them around, right? We want to be able to have a way. We want to have a way that we can dynamically create uh, ten or three thousand people. It doesn't really matter, and we want to be able to keep this around and not really have to worry about um, the scope of what all this stuff is in. Now that might kind of sound confusing, but I'm just going to dive into right now, sort of a stack versus the heap example. Now everything we've done in this series up to this point has been on the stack. And uh, feel free to not type when I'm typing right now, just FYI. But like I was saying, everything, all the tutorials that I've done so far, we've created memory on what's known as the stack. We haven't touched the heap at all. The heap is new to this tutorial. Um, but yeah, basically what we are going to do, or what we've done is we've allocated all this memory. We don't really think about it. And that's the beauty of allocating space on the stack. So. Um, let's just say, for example, I have this program and when this program starts up, we start with our main function and C looks at this and says, all right, we have a struct and I need to make some space for it. I'll allocate some space on the stack. And, uh, so basically it just makes enough space for the person, which is a pointer. So enough space for a pointer and enough space for an int, ta-da, easy, understood, and it'll do that for you then we call this add function and the add function gets called and C says, all right, we have a two ints here. I need to create a, enough space for these two ints. We're also going to call this printf in here. So I need to make enough space to pass off uh, the values that I'm going to send to this printf. So we need to make space for that. Then it's going to call the printf. Then it's going to, you know, make new space on the stack. So after this add function, it'll make another block for the printf function. And whatever the printf function has to use, it'll make space for that stuff. So that is the stack. It's very beautiful, very easy to understand, and it's all handled by C itself. 
Now, uh, the only thing with this is that uh, once, or the very important thing about this uh, the stack is that once the function's done, all the memory that was created there is deleted, basically. It's killed off, right? So once we come back to this add function, so basically the printf was called and we've come back to the add, everything that was created in the printf is now dead. It doesn't exist anymore. And the stack is basically pushed off and uh, it's otherwise known as the stack frame is pushed off and uh, all that memory's gone. Likewise, when we come back to the main, basically when the add is done, right, the variables that were created like A and B are now pushed off the stack as well. We don't need them anymore because the function is done and it's gone. So the thing about the stack is that it's uh, all these variables are added on the lifespan of the function. So everything that was added with the function is going to be only done inside of that function. And um, once the function is gone, right, then all the variables that were in the function are gone as well. So that's sort of the idea, the general idea of the stack. Now, why do we need the heap? What is the point of the heap then? Um, well, going back to that context book example, if we had to make, say, 3,000 people, we do not want to allocate 3,000 people on the stack and then put them into like a context book or something. And why would we not want to do that? Well, the reason is everything on the stack is a physical value. It's copied. So, for example, in the printf, uh, we are physically passing a copy of what a plus b is, right? So it's going to pass the value of 13 onto the printf. And so it has its own physical value. If we had a context book of 3,000 people, we do not want to copy 3,000 objects, or rather structs, onto somewhere else, right? And uh, there could be a lot more, right? Because a name in particular could have, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things that we don't really think about, but there's a lot of values that might end up being copied, and we do not want to copy this much information just to send something to a function, right? So it's a very important thing to understand is that the heap is used when we have to manage large parts of data. The stack is good for short little things, stuff that can be managed in a function, and you'll use it most of the time. But if you want to keep something or persist something, uh, longer than a function call, or if you want to be able to dynamically add or remove or whatever different piece of information to some kind of resource, then you want to allocate the stuff on the heap. And um, there's, you know, there's a lot of different things. You've probably heard of a stack overflow, or you've probably heard of at least of the website stackoverflow.com. And the idea of a stack overflow is that you've created too much stuff on the stack. You have overflowed the stack. And so that's the other problem with the stack is that there's a limited size to what you can actually put on the stack. So it's not really fit to uh, create 3,000 things on it, basically. So that is basically why we need the heap. And if you write any you know, pretty much serious C program, you will probably use uh, the heap. And so you might be wondering, okay, so great. You talked about the stack, but how do I make stuff on the heap? Well, we're going to dive into that right now. So let's just go ahead and delete what we have here. And we're gonna make a new function, and we're gonna create a bunch of functions here, but this one is going to create a new person struct, basically, on the heap. So we're just gonna say create person. And this function is going to take a const care star name and an int of age. And as you might guess, this is basically just a initialization of a person struct, okay? So we're just trying to, we're gonna call this function down here, we're gonna call create person, we're gonna tell it a name and an age, and then it's going to give us back a new pointer, right, to a person on the heap. So how do we do this? Well, we wanna create a new person pointer, we'll call it P, and we need to allocate space for this. Now, before to allocate space, we simply did, you know, struct person and then p, and that allocated space on the stack. But we don't want to do that, and in this case, we actually want to get the space from the heap. Now, we can do this quite simply by going to the uh, heap, and we can do this by including the standard library header file. And we need to make the call to malloc, all right? So malloc is your, 
you're basically the function you want to use to create any space ever on the heap. So unlike the stack, it's not very nice. The stack is very nice to play with because it just knows how, to, how much space to make for you, and you explicitly say basically how much space you need. However, when you're dynamically creating memory, right, you need to have enough space to create stuff on the heap. So uh, in this case, we are going to make a, we can do size of, and size of returns a size t, and we just want to get the size of a struct person. All right, so what this is doing is we're saying get the size of a struct person. That figures out that it needs a pointer to a character, basically, so it needs enough space for a pointer, and then it needs enough space for an int. That's all that malloc does, or that's what size of does. So it gets us the size of that. The only job that malloc has now is to create that space on the heap, and it will tell us where it's located. So that's what we get back, is we get back the address of where we have created this person. So really not much, really not much has happened. Uh, malloc really doesn't do anything special, just creates a block of space out in the ether, aka the heap, and now we have to set up that random block of space, all right? So to set up the block of space, we can do something like this. So we can say p, and we use the, uh, I'm blanking on the name of that, uh, the operator, but it, the operator is basically just a slash and then uh, the greater than or less than sign, and it's accessing the age property or the age member basically of this pointer to the struct. So before, right, we would use the p.age syntax, but because we've created a struct, or because we've created a pointer to a struct, we need to use a different syntax, and that is the syntax we need to use. So this is basically saying, go to the address of where the p is located, and wherever the person is actually located in memory, access the age member. All right, so once we've done that, we just need to assign it the age. Quite simple, right? We, we already created the space with this malloc call here, and we are just setting, we're just going to basically copy over the int to that age over there. Now, the name, however, is trickier because all that we created space for is the pointer to the name. We did not create space for the actual name. So this is very important to understand, <laughs> and it's a very common place to screw stuff up. Now, the reason I say this is because we could have a name of Yoda, right? That's four characters, and uh, the fifth, we need a fifth spot, though, to have the null character. That's how strings work in C. And we could also have a string that has 20 characters, right? There's no real, we don't really know how large the string is going to be in this case. And because we don't know that, we need to dynamically allocate that space. So we can do that by saying, all right, at the name pointer, basically, we want to allocate some space. So we'll, again, use malloc. And we need the size of, and I'm actually going to include another thing here. And this is from the string. So let me get that, string.h. And there's a function on there called string len, which just gets the length of a conch character, aka a string. And we can just do something like that. Now we also need to add a plus one on this though, because we also need to include the null character at the end. So what we're doing here is we're saying, get the length of the string. And this means if we had the string Yoda, that's four letters, so the length is four. And we need to add the plus one to include enough space for the null character. So that's what size of gets us. It gets us enough space for five characters. That's all it does, right? It says we want enough space for five characters. Gives that to malloc. Malloc says, cool, we'll make enough space in the heap somewhere for five characters. We don't really know where it's going to create it, but it's going to create it somewhere on the heap. And uh, that's great. That's what it's going to do. It's going to make enough space for all that stuff. Now, uh, it's going to return that location, right? And we are setting that to the name. So the name on our person now points to an address on the heap that has enough space for five characters. That's, that's literally all that's going to happen. Now, uh, that's fine, but we need to actually, you know, copy this name over to the name space that we just made. So to do that, we can use the string copy to the destination, which is our name. 
something like that. And the source is the actual thing we're copying, so the name, right? And so string copy is very simple. It's just like a while loop that goes through and it copies all the characters from the name and it copies it into the space of this guy. So that's really all it's doing, nothing too special. Um, but that's that. And lastly, we just need re to return this person. So we just say return P. And now we've created enough space for the person. Yeeha. And that's it. So this is dynamically allocating memory for the person. So let's go ahead and make some person objects. So we can say struct person, and we need star P1. And we'll just uh, call create person. And we'll pass off the name of Yoda. And we'll pass off the age of 900. We'll make another one just for uh, awesomeness. So this, we'll call this P2. And uh, we'll change a few things here. So put my name in there and throw an age. All right, so now we have two person objects that we dynamically created on the heap. Now, this might not look too impressive, right? You could probably say, well, I could have just done that on the stack. Yes, but remember the whole point of this is that if we wanted to create tons of person objects, we have the freedom to do that. And also if we needed these objects to persist outside of the function that we called them on, we'd also want this to happen as well because all this create person thing is doing is it's just returning a pointer. That's all it's doing. It's re point, returning the address of where this person is located. All right, so that's cool and dandy, but uh, we really wanna do something with this person. So let's, let's add another uh, print function to this. So we'll call uh, print person, and this will print a person out. So what we're passing on is a struct person star P, all right? And so we just wanna do something with the, the person, basically. So we're just gonna call printf, for example, and we'll say percent %s is percent %d years old, backslash n, and then we'll just access the properties or the members on the person. So we can say p.name and p.h, right? Jeez, there we go. All right, so that's that. And we've now accessed the name of the person and the age of the person, we fill that in, right? So that's what the string's gonna print out. And we can test this out by calling the print. So we'll just say print person p1 and print person p2, like that. All right, now let's go ahead and test this and see what we get. So we'll go ahead and run. And you see, wow, look at that. We got Yoda is 900 years old and Lucas is 20 years old. And that's exactly what we expect to get, right? And this is great. Now, the only problem with what we've done here is we've created this memory, but we've never gotten rid of it. Now, I mean, uh, you could argue that, well, all this memory is going to be uh, destroyed as soon as we uh, end the program. And yes, that is true in C. However, uh, if you were to create something dynamically and then you removed it, for example, let's say you had, uh, if you wanted to create some kind of uh, context book, like we were saying, and we wanted to remove a person. Well, if we wanted to remove a person, that means we have to get rid of the memory that we created for the person in the first place. And this is a very crucial, most probably very most important point that I can get across here is that anytime you make a call to Malik, make sure you free that exact thing. So here you can see that you made a call to malloc twice. You should have a call to mal or free twice somewhere in your program. That is pretty much a guarantee. So where are we gonna do this? Well, we're gonna make another function and we will call it free person, all right? And what free person is gonna do is basically what I just explained. So it's going to get rid of the person that we created, all right? And it's quite simple to do this. So all we have to do is call the free function. So very simple, it's just called free. And this takes some pointer to the memory location that we're trying to free. So we just have to pass the address of the thing we wanna free. Like I said though, we did create two things. So you have to be careful about this. We allocated space for the string and we also allocated space for the person. So first off, we need to get rid of the string for the name. So we can say get rid of p for the name 
and then we want to free the person itself. You do not want to do this in the reverse order, however, because if you reverse the order, it means you're freeing the person first, and then you're trying to access something on the person after that. So you do not want to reverse the order of how we freed things here. You want to access, basically, you want to access all the members first, free whatever the members have, and then you want to free the actual object that you're trying to free. All right, so that's that, and uh, all you have to do is say um, free person, so free person, and you just pass P1, and free person P2. All right, and that is how you can actually clean up the memory that you allocated with this um, when you allocated the person. All right, so this pretty much sums up everything about dynamic memory allocation. Just to hammer home a few points here, anytime you need to copy space or you need to make space for something new that you're going to create, you need to allocate the space. You need to malloc it in some way. All right, and this is very important to understand. So. In the case of the person, the person has these two members, and so when we get the size of the struct person, it understands we're gonna make a pointer to a string, or a pointer to, uh, you know, character pointer, basically. And then we want uh, the int age. And so this mallet call makes enough space for that. Grandiose, we can set up um, the age, right? Now, the age already had the space because we allocated enough space for the int. The name, however, does not have enough space for the entire character name that we want to create. So in our case here, we have the name that is simply a pointer. It's a care star. It is a pointer to a value. It does not contain the entire string. So because of that, we need to allocate the space to actually hold the string. So we malloc size of the name that we're going to add in, and then we plus one just to get the space for that zero or the null character. Then we actually copy the values over into the new space that we just allocated, and then we return the person, right? Then, you know, we have the little print function. And then the other very, very important part is anytime you ever call malloc, you should be already thinking in your head, where can I free this, right? You always have to free these things. So anytime you malloc, you free. That's like number one rule of um, mallocing stuff in C, I guess. Um, so here we're both we're freeing that name that we mal we allocated, and then we are freeing the person that we allocated as well. And once you've done that, you're free to go. So no pun intended, but that's that's dynamic memory allocation in C. If you have any other questions on dynamic memory allocation, uh, feel free to leave your questions in the comments below. We'll probably have, I don't know, maybe a few tutorials on uh, something else. If you guys have some suggestions of things you'd like to see, leave your suggestions in the comments below, and I'll see you in an upcoming tutorial. All right, see you then.